Next up, we have Mike Rissi. Mike Rissi studied physics as an undergrad at Carleton College before starting his software career with a six-month stint in India. He went on to work in the game industry for several years before co-founding MadEye, a tool for remote pair programming. Recently, he's been actively involved with Velocity, the official testing framework for Meteor built by the Meteor community. Today, he's here to tell us about MeteorPad, which will make it easier than ever to quickly try out Meteor code. Please welcome Mike. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Rissi, uh, and I'm really excited to announce MeteorPad today. Uh, MeteorPad is a project I've been working on closely with MDG, and it basically lets you edit and run Meteor code in the browser. Uh, but before I give you a full walkthrough of MeteorPad, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the inspiration behind it. So a uh, quick show of hands, how many of you are familiar with JS Fiddle? OK, so most of you, for those of you that aren't familiar, JS Fiddle is like a great way to uh, test out client HTML, client JavaScript, client CSS. And then once you have something cool, you can share it with other people. CodePen is another site that is uh, a lot like JS Fiddle. You see a lot of people putting like up portfolios of like these really cool HTML5 pens on CodePen. So I'd encourage you to check that out as well. And I've spent the past year and then some working on MadEye, which is a tool for remote pair programming. Um, and it's working on MadEye where I got pretty familiar with web editors, web terminals, and how those integrate with uh, file systems. Uh, and that brings me to MeteorPad. So what you see is something that's kind of like uh, JS Fiddle and CodePen, except uh, it has a terminal running inside of it. But instead of talking about a screenshot, I think it's time for the real demo. So I'm just going to go here to MeteorPad.com. And you see a server starting here in the bottom. And now we have the leaderboard app running over here. And this is a fully functional leaderboard app. But just to prove uh, that this is uh, actually what it's running, let's change this a little bit. I'm going to claim this leaderboard app as my own. So I'll press Save here. And we'll see the server restarted. And now we have an H1 tag over there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have an HTML file here. We also have a JavaScript file, which is shared between the client and the server, a client-only JavaScript file, server-only JavaScript file, and some CSS. Now, as I was scrolling by here, you might have noticed these little selectors over here. So if, I, if I'm more of a CoffeeScript kind of a person, I can change it. And two things happened here. One is the CoffeeScript package was added to the project. And two, uh, the app broke because this isn't valid CoffeeScript code. So I'm going to fix that error there. And I need to put an at sign here to make players a global variable. And this time, I'm just going to save with Command S. And we see the server restarted again. And it looks exactly the same. So let me just resize this a little bit here. So I, I'm going to add a, just a little comment here. So you believe me that this is uh, actually what's running. And we can see the server started comment down here. So besides CoffeeScript, there's a lot of other packages that can be included. Um, anything that is a Meteor package works right now. So this includes all the accounts. Um, I'm going to add Bootstrap here, though, just so we can see it quickly change the way that the, this looks over here. So the server will restart again. And it looks a little bit different, actually a little bit worse. So I'm going to get rid of Bootstrap. Something else that's kind of cool is uh, I can change the version of Meteor. So if I'm trying to reproduce a bug or something, and maybe I want to see if that happened in 0812, I can press that. And everything restarts with 0.8.1.2 as the version. 
Uh, this is the title of my pad. Just, this is just for like the user's reference. But uh, you can see it there, and uh, I changed the name down here, Mike's Leaderboard. Now, what if I want to share this with somebody else, though? I can copy the URL here, and I'm going to simulate a new user with an incognito tab. And if I go to this pad, I also see Mike's Leaderboard. But I'm going to get a completely different server running down here. But the important thing to notice on uh, this is that there is a save copy button here instead of a save button. And that's because, in this case, uh, the anonymous user does not own the pad. So they are able to run the pad, but they're not able to save this copy of it. So I'm going to go back to the presentation now for a bit and talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. So how many of you are familiar with Docker? OK, so uh, I'm going to give a really brief, partially incorrect summary of it, which is that it provides isolation between environments. And you can think of it as a lighter weight version of VMs. But it's really cool, and you should check it out if you haven't already. So this is the basic architecture behind MeteorPad.com. So you see that there is uh, the proxy up here at the top, which goes to three different Meteor apps, each running MeteorPad. And then all of your files are stored in a Mongo database. If you hit one of these uh, URLs with a different subdomain, then you are redirected to one of the Meteor containers. And this is where each of your MeteorPad apps are run. So one concept that I wanted to stress is that one pad can have many containers. So a pad is basically just a collection of source code. And you can have multiple, every one of your browser tabs is essentially a different running instance of that app. So before I finished, I wanted to talk about what I see as some of the use cases for MeteorPad. Um, one of the main motivating ones was to make it easier to try out Meteor. Um, all you need is a link, and it works on any modern web browser. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I've always been kind of surprised how few people are willing to type one command in their terminal to install Meteor. And my hope here is that giving them a link makes it uh, easier. Um, being able to experiment with Meteor packages. Uh, today, this is somewhat useful. As you can try out all the different Meteor packages. But where this is really going to become powerful is when Atmosphere packages are brought into Meteor with 0.9. And anyone can demo or try out a package using MeteorPad. Another use case is reproducing bugs. So this was really exciting for me today. I picked a random issue on GitHub. And you'll see this a lot of times where somebody creates a, a repo where the bug can be reproduced. So I looked at this guy's repo, and then I brought it into MeteorPad and put a link to a MeteorPad reproduction. And two minutes later, David Glasser labeled the, the bug. And not long after, David Greenspan commented and closed it. And I'd like to hope that MeteorPad made it a lot easier for this to happen. And uh, in the future, uh, reproducing bugs will be a lot easier. So yeah, friends are too lazy to install Meteor. I think I kind of covered that. So go ahead and try it out now. Um, it's in alpha right now. Um, and there's uh, a few things that are worrying me. One is that it hasn't been extensively performance tested. Another is that the data center is currently undergoing maintenance as we speak. And I'm also going to be out of town for the next week, few days to uh, see uh, a friend of mine get married. So it might be a bit of a rocky start, but uh, in time it will be stable. And I hope that uh, you guys can get excited, as excited about it as I am. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, bug reports, uh, let me know. Probably the best way is email, uh, but I also have my Twitter handle up there as well. Thank you. Questions from the audience. Slava has a question. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, Slava? 
Uh, that's a great question. Is data persisted to the database? So data is persisted to a database. Um, but one of the things is that these containers are very aggressively shut down. So when your pad starts up again, it's probably going to be a different machine with a different database. So like any of this uh, score data over here is not something that you should rely on being kept. Um, future versions of MeteorPad are going to try a little bit harder to persist the database across sessions. But uh, for, the first, for right now, assume that it's disposable. Oh, OK. Um, so there's a question about these two buttons up here. So one of these is a reload. And the other one will open it up in a new tab. So this is something that uh, if we wanted to sort of do the classic uh, Meteor demo that shows how it works across uh, browsers, we could do that. Uh, are there any plans for pro plans or any additional features? Uh, any additional plans for professional plans? Oh, professional plans. Uh, I'd say it's a possibility, but I haven't really thought that far ahead, honestly. So the question was, is there a way to import a repo? Uh, currently, no. It is one of the higher priority features. Um, yeah, two, two of the things that I'm excited about are having an easy way to upload into MeteorPad. Uh, and whether that's like from a repo or a command that you run, like the command line, that's something like Meteor, like MeteorPadify or something. Um, that's to be determined. Uh, the other is like a download button, where if you have a pad, then you can press it and you get a zip, which would be like the Meteor app. Um, so not yet, hopefully soon. Uh -huh. is, Go ahead. Is the editor um, collaborative if two people are editing the same file? What happens? Um, is the editor collaborative? Uh, no, it's not collaborative right now. Um, only the owner of the pad is able to edit it. If somebody else wants to make changes, they have to basically fork that pad. Um, having come from MadEye, where it was a collaborative editor, uh, I'm interested in that space. But I think, at least right now, it's not, uh, not a super high priority feature. Any other questions from the room? Uh, is there a way to access the client console from the main app? Uh, kind of. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure how much uh, debugging you've done with iframes in general. Um, there's nothing too fancy going on on this page. Uh, this leaderboard over here is just an iframe. Uh, but let's see what happens if I do open up the inspector. Oh, I get a, a message that warns me about being here. Uh, and the reason it warns you is because it's kind of deceiving, where you will see console log output here, but you will not, uh, if I type any commands, they're running against the MeteorPad application and not against uh, the application in the iframe. If you want the commands to go against the iframe, you can select it from this dropdown here. Um, but in general, I'd say your better bet is to open up a separate window and Use a Chrome inspector there. Any other questions for Mike? Right. Very impressive, Mike. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.